What is up guys, it's Jay here, Jay Media One, and today we are talking about is the Steam Deck by Valve all that? So let's go. So right here we have the Steam Deck by Valve. This product just got released not too long ago. We were able to get our hands on one of these. Now, with this product we were in pre-order, we got kicked out of pre-order somehow, so we had to get it late. But we've been using it for a while now, I would say about four weeks. And so far, so good. So here's my opinion on this item. So a lot of people say, why not just buy a laptop, right? And if you're going to use a handheld or a kind of gaming device that you could take with you, why not use a laptop? Well, there's several reasons for that. First and foremost... This device can be stored in your backpack, and it comes in a pretty cool case. It's got the buttons covered, but it can be stored in your backpack and pulled out and used anywhere, okay? So you can do that with a laptop. You could store it in your backpack, but when you pull out a laptop, you don't really want to be using that on like a train or like a public transport. You're waiting for a bus, something like that, right? So that's one advantage that I see. So one. Two is that the form factor of this thing is actually very, very nice. It fits in your hands really nice. You can see that the grip there is almost perfect for anybody's hands. They kind of just slide around this bump in the back, and that makes it really, really comfortable to hold. So that's two. Now, a controller wouldn't be so bad to hold, but now you got to take out a controller, you got to plug it in, or you can use a wireless controller, I suppose. But regardless, you have to have the controller and the laptop with the big laptop lid, everything in the way. This is a little bit tighter, more compact, and I like it. The display on it's really nice. It's got two little touch pads here, two joysticks. It's got your regular analog stick, and then your four buttons on the side. Now, Steam also put a Steam button here and an additional button here as well. So like for retro games and things like that, you can use this as your start button. If you see, I'm just turning it on there, and you can see Red Dead's already ready to roll. It's a fun game to play. Now, every single game is not supported in your Steam library on this deck. However, there's a lot of them. There's thousands of them. And the community is very large. There's a lot of people that have these Steam decks now. And so the community really works together to try to work out some of the compatibility issues. Now, Steam does tell you if the game is compatible. It's right there in the game info. It tells you if it's playable in the details. And if there's anything wrong with the game, it'll say this game's launcher setup tool may require the touch screen or virtual keyboard or have difficult to read text. And that's just because the text is a little bit smaller on this. This is 720p output. So you're not going to get like super, super high def, but for the size of the screen, it's perfect. You don't even notice that it's 720p. It feels more like 4K. And it does a really good job with emulation. Now, we also have an emulator on here so we can play some of our retro games. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so this device, I specifically got just to play retro games on. And the retro games are really, really good looking. I mean, they're fantastic. So you got your USB-C up here to charge. You got your headphone jack out. This is your volume rockers, your power button. You got your two bumpers on top and then your two... Uh, triggers you also got these four extra buttons underneath which is really nice to have they can be programmed to not work at all or they can be programmed to operate whatever you like the back here has some mesh on it that's where the fan is to cool it as well as on the top you're going to see some mesh the fan is pretty loud it's not super quiet but it works well underneath here we have our usb-c card and that's where you're going to want to put extra storage i have a one terabyte i think it's smart for anybody to have at least one terabyte of storage on that and so if we go back to the steam menu here we can go back to home and you can go and see your games your current games your collections things like that on there what's fun for you to play like i said i'm a big retro gaming kind of person i think retro games are super fun um, MU Deck is probably the best right now for retro games because it lets you have lots of different emulators in one. And MU Deck is pretty easy to load. You just go to emudeck.com, you download it, and then you install it. And it kind of guides you through step by step on how to get set up. 
and it's very easy and customizable. Now we have NES, Nintendo 64, and Sega 32X. That's what I like to play. Nintendo 64 games look pretty outstanding on this. Um, we like to play like Star Wars, uh, snowboarding game. There's lots of lots of cool games that I forget even existed. Uh, Cruising USA. So there's Tekken on here. Um, that was a super fun game back in the day. So anybody that's in their 30s, 40s is going to really, really have a lot of fun with the uh, nostalgia of that stuff. So I'm going to load up a game just so you guys can kind of see how good it looks. Let's go... I think everyone remembers Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Really, really fun game. Tony Hawk's were like the hottest games ever when it came out. It'll tell you there's even an expansion pack found on this device, even though it knows that it's a Steam Deck. The controls are pretty much set up for it, so the buttons are there, but you can change that. If you push down on both of these joysticks, it lets you uh, change what control output you have. So we're just going to do a basic uh, free skate, something that you guys can see real fast. There's Tony Hawk, so we're going to pick the best, and wherever. Now you can load cheats on this, which I think is super cool. I use the cheats all the time, and you can have them preload and all kinds of stuff. So you can see how good the graphics look. I mean, it looks super, super good. It might even look better than what it did in uh, real life on the, on the machine because they use a little bit of enhancements here. But uh, yeah, you're going to be able to play all of these cool retro games and everything as well on this. Now, if you're playing the retro games, they're obviously a lot smaller storage-wise. They take up less space, which I love that fact. The battery doesn't get murdered by them because it's not trying to produce all these graphics and all this enhancements. You gotta remember back in the Nintendo 64 days, those were cartridges. So they didn't have to run a disc. They didn't have a whole lot on them. They weren't, uh, they weren't even close to what you have for game size now. Now we have 50 gigabytes in a game. Some are even bigger than that. If you look at Grand Theft Auto, for example, they probably have hundreds of gigs worth of data over time, they progressively just get larger. So this game here is probably only a couple megabytes. And that just makes it run more efficiently on a system that's so powerful like this one. And you can play retro games on laptops and things like that. But like I said, just being able to pull this out, I'll honestly say that I have all of them. I have laptops, desktops, I have multiple laptops. I could pull any of those out at any time. I have a Nintendo Switch, I have a Nintendo Wii, I have a Wii U. I have the old retro Nintendos. You can see right here that I have the old Nintendo 64 controller. So I still have a Nintendo 64, the original. Because I really enjoy retro gaming. Now, um, I always reach for this guy because this guy is just comfortable to hold. It's super, super easy to use. And uh, it's got everything. I think progressively over time, this is just going to get better because the community is so large. You can play this thing in desktop mode. You can go to a desktop and use this as a regular Windows computer. There is an adapter so that you can plug this into your television and you can use it just as a, like I said, just as a regular PC. It's not going to be the fastest PC out there, but it will be um, pretty able, pretty capable. It'll be able to run basic things. And <clears throat> typically, if you're running it for something like that, that's all you need to do. I don't know if a lot of people have mentioned this, but you can keep multiple games open at the same time in this manner, and they just kind of stay up here tucked up in this corner. And uh, so you can switch back and forth super easy. You can save the game state and reload the game. Um, you can resume the game at any point in time, which is very, very cool. So you just go, you just click on resume game and you're right back in it. Now, I think Valve really thought hard about the positioning of everything because, like I said, the comfort feel of everything here, it is really comfortable. It's really, really comfortable and easy to handle. So let's go back here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I was talking about with the controls. So I push those down at the same time, and you have all these little menus here. So load state, save state, core options, take a screenshot, you can start a recording. It tells you the latency. There's all kinds of fancy stuff. There's cheats, so you can load cheats. You can apply cheats there. And then you have your streaming. So if you want to stream this, you can. Um, all kinds of cool stuff. Restart, close, resume. And so all of that is inside of your menu here. 
You go over to this menu here and you can change your settings as far as your input. So you can change your controller, your keyboard, or your mouse settings, your audio, your video, and your core settings as well inside of there. NetPlay just lets you play online. You can connect as a host and do it that way if you like. So there's all kinds of fun options there as well. <clears throat> and that's just emulation. If I was just to buy this thing for just an emulator, I would. If it couldn't run anything else, I would use it just for that. Because the other emulator systems like this out there either don't have as large of a screen, they're way more expensive, and I don't think they emulate the games as well, to be honest with you. I've had several of them, and uh, I always go back to the Steam Deck. The battery life everyone complains about because it only lasts a couple of hours if you're playing like a Class A Title A game. However, if you're playing retro like I do, then you're not going to waste the battery. I can play this thing all day long on retro games and not kill the battery. So, like I said, it's just the demanding part of the game that creates that kind of issue. It's the same thing with the graphics. The fan never comes on for me, but that's if I'm retro gaming. If I'm playing high-level new games like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead... Of course the fan's going to come on because it's trying to load a lot of graphics. It's trying to load vector shading, shadows, all kinds of different things. This thing on retro is not doing that. And some of the retro games, I was very surprised to see just how good they looked on this. Because honestly, they're old, right? 2015, I think, is the last game that you can get for PlayStation 3. Go back even further than that. So you're looking at like 99 for Nintendo 64. Somewhere in that range. And <clears throat> so that's what, 22, 23 years ago. And these games still look really, really good. I had my kid ask me the other day. I was playing baseball on a Nintendo 64. And he said, are you playing, uh, are you playing the new uh, MLB The Show game? Which is the brand new game for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5. And I said, no, this is a Nintendo 64. It's because of the display. It, it's compressed, so it looks cleaner because of the size. You're not playing it on an 86-inch screen. If you were to hook this up to a large monitor, you would notice a difference, of course. So it's it's all, you have to take it all in jest. It all has the, its own purposes. Um, if we come down here, you can play games like Red Dead. This is 112 gigs. Why is this game so massive? Because they keep adding stuff to them, and they can do this. Games like, game companies like Rockstar, for example, who are massive, um, they can keep adding and adding and adding. You can play online. You can do all kinds of stuff. They can keep adding features, and that file size gets bigger. And then, then they just have you update it, and it gets bigger and bigger. One terabyte is not very much. You think it is, it's a thousand gigs, sounds like a lot. But when you got a hundred gigs in one game, that's only 10 games. That's it. And then you're done. So you really have to use your, your mind and think about that. You don't have to buy the, the greatest um, as far as storage right off of the track. Why? Because you can upgrade this very easily. You just stick in a micro SD, you format the card and you're done. Now. I did run into a little bit of trouble once I had the card formatting, switching it back and forth between a computer. You're going to want to mostly use this as your computer once you format that card, when you're saving things on the card. And that is just because it's a little bit more difficult. It's not impossible. Nothing is. But uh, it's just easier. So what I do is I'll pair a mouse. And this has an on-screen keyboard. Um, you can set it how you want. It starts out with Steam and X. I changed mine to A and X, and now A and X will bring up the um, on-screen keyboard. And I can type on there just like I normally would. It's better with a mouse. You can use these little trackpads as a mouse if you like. But uh, I think it's way better if you use a mouse when you're in desktop mode. I don't pair it to a, a display. I never have. So the game's launcher does not support control input. You can use the trackpad or touch screen to interact with it. That is not the best thing to see because you don't really want this to be like a PC gaming experience. And like I said, this is why I typically, typically will play those retros just because of that. But there's a ton of games that it works on this. It's just my preference. It's what I like to play. I am old. I am 40 years old. So those retro games to me are are uh, great. Maybe I'm not old compared to some of you out there. But 
for gaming a gamer, uh, I'm considered old, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the graphics don't look bad. You can download 10,000 games, so you don't have to pay $50 per game and get, and get all these games. You can get 10,000 plus games, I should say. Um, my wife likes to play Mario, kid likes to play some Sega, some Sonic. Um, I like the Nintendo 64 games a lot. 007's on here, you can get Star Wars. You do all kinds of stuff you can get on here. And there's, there's tons of stuff out there you have to look. I can't condone downloading ROMs, for example, but if you look, <clears throat> it's there. You guys have Google, you can Google it, and you will find it. Um... So anyways, I just wanted to give you guys my input on the Steam Deck. I think for the price and the value, you're getting the best handheld you can possibly get, and it's only going to get better. This thing is fully repairable. You can tear it down. Go to ifixit.com. They'll show you how to put different joysticks on here. If you want a little bit better of a joystick, you can upgrade the uh, internal storage as well. They make chips, so you can put them inside of here and get bigger storage inside. They make all kinds of things for it. And uh, like I said, battery life is the, is the only kicker that I'm hearing. Battery life is just going to be what it is. It's taking a lot of power to run some of these games. But if you're a retro gamer, I can promise you, you'll be able to play it much, much longer on a single battery. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to mash the like button and hit subscribe so that you can stay tuned when we release more like it. We're going to be coming out with some new gadget videos, maybe some new uh, technology that you might want to buy your friends for Christmas this year, and things like that. Anyways, guys, later.